light of the morning sun I know there's hope for everyone And when the sun will come I know we'll rise song. Maybe take me from this, uh, record me from this angle, Av. Yes, alright. Because here yeah, the people will hear the music the best. Uh, we are very happy to be publishing this music for Jonathan Pollard's release. It's called Songs for Pollard. I wrote a lot of these songs um, a long time ago, but some of them I've changed because of the very pertinent agenda. Yes.
like the wise man Thanks very much. So, we've been doing certain interviews to bring attention to Jonathan Pollard. Yes. Um, now, I just want to briefly explain the situation in the Middle East. Basically, immigration to Israel has been going on for the last 3,100 years. Yes. Joshua conquered Israel. Yes. The Jews lived here up until the year 70 where the Romans exiled them, yes. but there continued to be a Jewish presence in Israel. Yes. In about the 17, actually before that, in 1492 there was something called the expulsion from Spain. Yes. The Jews were expelled because they would not convert to Christianity and the government expelled them. So from that time more Jews started coming back to Israel. They first came to a city called Sfat. But yes. even before that, there was always a Jewish presence in Israel. Yes, so in short, there was always Jewish presence in Israel. That is uh, the main thing. And even in Jerusalem, when sometimes Jews were not allowed there, there were Jews uh, somewhere in Jerusalem anyway, even though they were not allowed. Yes. That's correct. I've now you explained that very well. I think. Now, basically, um, in about the 1800s, certain very knowledgeable rabbis, like the Gaon of Vilna, the genius from the town of Vilna, yes. and also the first rabbi of Lubavitch, yes. also another Russian town, sent their students to Israel. Yes. From that time, people started coming back even more so. And, um, and this concept of Jews coming back to Israel was started by the rabbis and actually built up very much by the rabbis. Yes, so there were Hasidim and there were Litvaks and there were all other kinds of Jews uh, coming to settle down in Israel in the 19th century and uh, eventually, the, eventually other Jews came and then uh, the state of Israel was established. But uh, let's move on. Yes. Uh, let's move on to the year, let's say, 1915. Uh, 50, 50, 1950. 50. Now, had there been a prophet then who would say that in the year, uh, in the year 2013, there would be a Jew who would sit already 28 years in a prison in some country and mistreated in a country that mistreats prisoners and he would sit there not for murdering anybody not for robbing anybody not for raping anybody just for passing some information which was not relevant to that country but was very relevant and maybe very vital to israel now who would guess it would be the United States? People would make other guesses like Stalin's uh, USSR, Mao's uh, China, maybe Germany if the Nazis come to power again. I don't know. But who would think that it would be the United States? You have a very valid point, Afna. Basically, uh, I just want to tell the people that um, Basically, in 1918, there was something called the Belfort Declaration, which established Jewish, the Jewish people's right to their own country, yes. to the west of the Jordan. Yes. After that, in 1948, the United Nations gave advice that a Jewish state should be established and also an Arab state. Yes, and now, of course, uh, there was the independence war, right. the war of independence, and the Arabs didn't expect, uh, accept that. Right. And there was the Palestinian refugee question. Yes. All right, so now, now there is the yes, Palestinian I want to authority. So exactly, Avna, I want to show the people, how does this relate to Jonathan Pollard? 
Basically, when the State of Israel was established in 1948, thank God, it was a very uh, big miracle. It was uh, advice given by the United Nations and actually it wasn't international law. The international law was established in 1918 by the League of Nations that gave all the area to the west of the Jordan to the Jews. Basically what happened was when the Jews proclaimed the state in 1948 the Arab world rejected this proclamation and they went to war with Israel. Israel um, had enemies from, from all sides and and I want to tell the people how this relates to Jonathan Pollard. Jonathan Pollard worked for the Navy uh, in the 80s. In 1987 he was charged with um, with espionage, with selling information to Israel. Now this information was on these very hostile neighbors of Israel, these countries that were always at war with Israel. Um, the information was certain information that the United States possessed which it had agreed to give to Israel so that Israel could protect its citizens. Jonathan Pollard only gave over this information that was already supposed to be given. That wasn't given, yes. It wasn't given. What happened was at the trial of Jonathan Pollard, the prosecution made a deal with him. They promised him if he pled guilty, he would not get the life sentence. Thereafter, the Secretary of Defense, Caspar Weinberger, wrote to the judge. The judge overturned that once Jonathan Pollard had already plea bargained and he was given a life sentence. Yes. Uh, it's not at all just. It's yes. not at all just at all. Because basically the information was supposed to be given to Israel already. These are very, very hostile countries, hostile neighbors of Israel. They yes. did not give the information to Israel. Jonathan Pollard only gave over that information. Yes, and the United States ha still had that information. I mean, Jonathan Pollard just copied it. Uh, so, in any case, the United States has another prisoner in its hands uh, who, from the Jewish side, regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and that is Robert Manning. And uh, I don't exactly know what he did, but uh, anyway. And there is, of course, from the Palestinian side, there is Sirhan, who supposedly uh, assassinated Robert Kennedy. So I think Israel and the Palestinian Authority, of course, should come to an agreement that uh, if these three gentlemen are not released, before Israel releases whoever it wants to release from the Palestinian side, and of course uh, Israel should release other prisoners of it the same yes, amount of time. In that's prison. an interesting opinion of yours, Avna. But yes, I haven't United heard States much of these prisoners uh, myself. Yes. Uh, but I wanted to say like this: I haven't heard much about these other prisoners. Right, uh, but but uh, you are a very knowledgeable guy, Avna. So and, um, let me finish. If if the United States doesn't release these three gentlemen, then why should, I mean, I think Israel and the Palestinian Authority should come to an agreement that in this case, they would not go to the United States to uh, mediate, to ask for it to mediate between Israel and the Palestinian Authority, but rather to other states, let's say Russia, and a neighboring country whose, uh, whose national is imprisoned in another country which makes linkages between the Israeli-Arab conflict and its racial, its own racial conflict. Right. Okay. So I think so. I think Israel should, Israel and the Palestinian Authority should turn to Russia and Poland to mediate. Yes, that's a very interesting idea and uh, basically in closing this interview regarding Jonathan Pollard and the very important um, need for his release, I want to say to the people that everyone should be writing to their congressmen and women, whether here in Israel or in the United States, um, and people must tell their congressmen and women that they mean business. Yes. You know, we support these politicians based on the fact that they are doing good. Now, if they're not doing good 
and they're not helping Jonathan Pollard get out, then we're very free to, to vote for whoever it is that we want. Uh, this is the ideal of democracy. I've seen that in the United States and in Israel, no one is doing anything to help Jonathan Pollard. It's very much a symbolic gesture that's being made. Symbolic gestures are being made by the government of Israel, but nothing practical is being done. Yes. So this last song is called Gloria. Jonathan Pollard's early release. Amen. Thanks. 